Hey fellas, wanted to make a little video of, been getting a lot of uh, mail order requests and, and stuff for, you know, the Gen 3 PCM retrofit. Uh, a lot of guys use uh, mechanically shifted automatic transmissions like your turbo 350s, turbo 400s, power glides, etc. And the biggest problem a lot of guys have with those setups are, you know, making them idle in gear and out of gear. You know, with a mechanical style transmission, there's no way to determine whether it's in gear or if it's in park or neutral. Naturally, whenever you put it into gear, you know, it, it locks the clutch in the transmission and, you know, it puts it up against the torque converter. You know, you know, it tries to usually, you know, tug the vehicle somewhat, which puts load on the motor. Well, the PCM doesn't know that because it, it, it's a mechanical transmission. It has no electronics in it. So uh, I'm gonna make this little video here uh, to kind of help you guys wire this up to where the factory Gen 3 PCM can actually know that it's in park neutral or if it's in gear. Uh, GM's kind of done this nice for us uh, because the F bodies, some of them were actually wired up with a park neutral switch already. Similar to the old TPI and the LT1 cars, uh, they got a ground signal to the PCM to signify that it's in park or neutral. So on your 0411 green blue and red blue, which is technically a P01 and a P59 style PCM, um, what you'll want to do is wire in a wire to the blue connector pin number 34. And whenever that pin sees a ground, it's going to be in park neutral idle routine. So just to demonstrate that, I've, you know, got a, we've got a PCM here on the bench. Uh, and I've wired in a wire right here, which is pin 34. And this is actually a factory ground, uh, which it's actually grounded over here on my little harness or whatever. But this, this grounds through the internal ground circuitry of the PCM. So as you can see, I've got the two wires here that I can touch together. Uh, and I'm logging on the PCM there. You can see, let's see if I can get it to focus there. See, I've got it highlighted in blue. Now, if I touch these two wires together, see it says D4 right now. If I touch these wires together, well, it's hard to do one-handed. See, it goes to park. Release, D4. Put it together, it goes to park. Now, what that's gonna do is uh, that's gonna enable you to actually manipulate your idle airflow, uh, your, you know, desired RPM. Um, you know, it'll, it'll almost act like a normal electronic transmission at that point. Um, another thing that a lot of guys miss is the vehicle speed sensor. You know, naturally those transmissions don't have a speed sensor either. I always strongly advise to try to install a speed sensor because that also changes your routine based on speed you know because once you get above three four mile an hour or ten mile an hour however you have the table set up in the PCM it kicks out of adaptive idle routine so it won't learn the idle whereas if you don't have a speed sensor hooked up at all it reads zero mile an hour the entire time and the problem with that is with a mechanically shifted transmission, you know, say you're cruising 50 mile an hour down the road. Well, the PCM thinks you're sitting still. However, you, let's say you let off the throttle, 0% TPS. And, you know, naturally the inertia of the car is mechanically holding the RPM high because it's still in gear. Uh, well, that freaks the PCM out because the PCM doesn't know that it's got an electronic transmission. And it also doesn't know that you're actually moving down the road because the speed sensor 
that's showing zero mile an hour thinks you're sitting still, but it thinks the, it obviously sees the RPM being high. So to remedy that, you have to put a speed sensor on it so that the PCM knows that you're actually rolling down the road and it doesn't need to idle adapt or try to target the, the desired idle RPM. Uh, what'll happen is what, you know, it mechanically holding the RPM high with the throttle closed, it's gonna start trying to shut that idle air control valve or the throttle blade, whether it's electronic or mechanical throttle. And once you get to a point where you're actually slowing down enough to actually stop and the RPM will actually drop, it'll usually die because idle air control valve is all the way shut or the idle on the blade itself is all the way shut and it just can't catch itself fast enough. Sometimes it'll catch itself, sometimes it won't. But uh, that's that's the gist of you mechanical turbo 350, 400 power glide transmission LS Gen 3 idle routine. Um, get those things wired up and it will make your life a hundred times easier.